Hello lovelies, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm talking about my first NaNoWriMo experience. How it went, what I accomplished, any hurdles I had, the good, the bad, the ugly, the whole nine yards. The first few days went really, really well. I got up early, I had something to eat, I got myself a nice cup of tea or hot chocolate depending on the day or time of day. I sat down and I started writing before I did anything else. I knocked out easily a thousand words for the first week without any difficulty at all. It flowed really, really well. I was feeling really good in my body, in my mind. I was feeling super creative. Before NaNoWriMo started, I cleared everything off my desk, had a nice neutral white space, put down a white mat, white keyboard, well, white keyboard that lights up because it's super cool. But all of my gaming gear, all of my editing equipment, everything got stripped off the desk so there was nothing visually to distract me while I was working. This was slightly problematic in the evenings when I would video game with my friends. More on that on my other channel, if you're curious. But here we talk about my stationary obsessions and my journey in trying to publish my first book. So I had this clean, neutral space to work in. I had my bulletin board with some motivational quotes and things that kept me focused. And this became my workspace for the month. In this first week, I really enjoyed diving into my characters. I spent months doing character profiles, doing surveys, doing graphs and plots and all of those things. So I had all this data, but that first week writing those first scenes in the book where we're really getting to meet these characters and figure out who they are. What are they doing before the inciting incident? What have their lives been up to this point? Who are they? What does their day-to-day -day lives look like? And I really enjoyed taking all that data and turning it into a story, a day in the life of these characters. My story is based on four POVs, four points of view, of four young women who happen to be witches, and how magic plays into their daily lives when they use powers or don't, how they use powers, how magic works without info dumping, but just sort of introducing this is their daily life. This is just another day for them, but things are a little off. And so the big thing hasn't happened yet, but already something feels not quite right. Everyone's a little bit on edge. And this allows us to sort of see their daily life, their daily routine, what they would usually do, and then how they're sort of reacting to just that little bit of sand in their shell, that little bit of something's rubbing them the wrong way and how do they deal with that? I loved writing this. I had such a good time with it, really hammering out what my characters have been doing and who they are, who their friends are, who they associate with, how they deal with just the day-to-day, -day, the, the little normal daily conflicts, not like the big thing that happens and what do they, what are they going to do with this, but like the little arguments. Who do they go to? Who's their best friend? Who's their confidant? Who's their support people? And so these relationships, these moments were just a joy to write and to experience firsthand while I'm writing these scenes. Then we had the Easter weekend, get things tidied up and get treats and dye eggs and hide eggs and egg hunts, just doing family things and being together with the family. That didn't leave for a lot of time to get writing done. So thankfully I wrote so much that first week that my daily word count in order to achieve my word count by the end of the month, my daily word count became much smaller. Only reaching 500 words a day for a few days wasn't a problem. It didn't totally destroy my progress towards my goal. I managed to stay above my expected word count, which that was really great. I was really glad to see that, um, that progression. But 
getting knocked off my schedule, not meeting that 1,000 words a day to 2,000 words a day ideally, that messed with my head and I kind of lost my mojo a little bit. So in week two, I struggled. I sat there at the computer not typing much, or when I did type, deleting a lot of it, not saving it. A lot of time with my notebook, just tapping my pen against the page because nothing was coming. I didn't know where to go. I, I knew the, the big scenes, like the big beats, but for whatever reason, I felt like I needed to start at page one on page two, page four, page 10, like in order, as opposed to doing it another way. Thankfully, I had a really great writing buddy for this month. My daughter and I were both doing NaNoWriMo and she was fantastic. She's 16. She's also writing her first full length novel. She's written a bunch of short stories and novellas up until now. Not for school, for pleasure. She publishes them on something. So she's been doing this kind of for a while, writing these longer form stories. And so she's like, okay, well, what are your main scenes? If you can't think of what the connecting scenes are gonna be, what the next page is gonna be, write your big scenes. So you're still writing, you're still making progress. You're still moving forward with your story and getting words on the page. These scenes that need to be there, that are important, that are pivotal moments that I am already know are going to be there because I've got my plot written. I've got that basic skeleton written. And so she was like, instead of doing nothing and being paralyzed by what the next scene is or the next word is, write the big moments and then figure out the rest of it after that. But keep writing, keep working. And that was stellar advice. I then pulled out my outline and I started writing those big pivotal moments, those big scenes where I didn't know exactly where they were gonna come, I didn't know exactly how I was gonna get to them, but I knew that they were going to happen. And so those scenes got written. The blue moon called them. Magic chose them. It has to be you. How could you think of shirking this duty? I don't want this! I'm afraid. You know what I did. But how will they answer? That brings us into week three. This is where I really started diving into those big scenes and hashing out these big, beautiful, emotional moments that my characters are gonna go through. Those aha moments, those reveal moments, those really beautiful, traumatizing moments. Um, they got written out and I was feeling really good again about writing. I was feeling like I was making a lot of progress, really getting to know my characters, really crushing them, and then trying to figure out what they're going to do next and how are they going to deal in these moments, which again lets you get to know your characters and really feel your world. And that was fantastic. I met my word count goal of 30,000 words by April 20th, which was really early and I was really glad that I reached that. But then I realized I still didn't have a book. <laughs> like I was not done. This was not over. 30,000 words felt like so many words at the beginning of the month. And then I realized I'm maybe halfway through this thing. Maybe. <laughs> so. Again, there was a bit of yay and a little bit of, oh crap, like what do I do next? What do I do now? And again, really great reading buddy. The next thing is keep writing. So I kept writing.
This brings us to week four, the last week in here. I had reached my word goal and the next four days were rough. I went in and I would write a little bit of connecting scenes. I would do a little bit of the other stuff that was happening. I was jotting some notes into the document and trying to figure out where I was going with the story. Where, what was it missing? I mean, there was a lot missing, but what was it missing? And where was it missing that a lot? So this became a lot of brainstorming and writing by hand and thinking at my desk and thinking on the beach and just thinking. Um, and so I didn't have a lot of words that next week. Then that last weekend, I got really motivated. I was like, okay, I have two days left in this month. I'm going to knock out as much writing as I can. I'm going to try and push as hard as I can and really get my word count good and really dig into the story. And so I spent most of Saturday writing. And at the end of the month, my total word count for all of NaNoWriMo is 42,306 words from my goal of 30,000 words. Not quite getting to my personal hope of 50,000 words, which is what uh, November will be, which is 50,000 words is like the big event proper NaNoWriMo. It's a 50,000 word original manuscript. I learned a lot. I learned that just because I have plot beats and an outline, doesn't mean that I know exactly what I'm doing. That that is not the whole story. That is just the highlights. They're just the beats. What hurts us as readers, what makes us feel for those characters as readers, is not just a, hey, here's the adventure. Here's what happened. Here's hitting the highlights. It's why did they do these things? Why did they make these choices? Why are they flailing around with indecision or going gung-ho? Why are they acting the way they are? Who are they? What are they doing? And that isn't always told in those big moments. Those big moments is where who they are shines, but getting to know the characters and getting to care about the characters happens in the little moments between those big scenes. That's where those character sheets and character profiles came into play and discussing who are these people, what are they doing, what are their foibles, what are their flaws, what are their motivations, what are their goals, what are their ambitions, what are their dreams, who are they? And that makes it easier to figure out what they're doing, who their friends are, what, how they deal with stress. It was a fantastic month of writing, but my book still isn't done. Um, and because I ended up getting so focused on the writing of it, I ended up not vlogging as much as I had hoped to. The first day I got up right away, I did some writing, and then I took some b-roll and I made a quick short and I was like, I'm gonna do a short every day. Never did another <laughs> one about NaNoWriMo. So that fell apart and then I just went, okay, forget everything except writing. I was so focused on the mistakes I was making and the angle of the camera and all of this stuff while I was trying to film well working that those two things were canceled each other out. I was hoping to have a novel finished, but I don't. There is a second NaNoWriMo that comes up in July. So this month of May is gonna be getting ahead on the channel again, focusing on content and the channel so that I can then go back to trying to finish my first draft. I do wanna get it done. So that's how NaNoWriMo went. I crushed my goal before the month was over and completely failed in bringing you guys content about NaNoWriMo during NaNoWriMo. I make no promises on whether or not I will do better next time, guys. I will try, but no promises. If you enjoyed this kind of a video, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below what you liked about it. It was a lot more work. So if you wouldn't mind giving me some feedback, was it worth all of the stress and trouble? What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? How could I improve my content? I really do want to make things that you guys enjoy watching. So let me know when I'm doing well, please. Hit that like button, drop your comments and thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching this video and for sticking around to the end. I really appreciate it. Be sure to check me out on Instagram if you're interested in hearing what I'm doing a bit 
between videos, as well as check me out on TikTok if you're curious to see what silly little short film content I'm releasing over there. Love having you guys here. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate you. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, take care, lovelies. Bye.